is Laura and I'm a sexuality educator based in Brazil. I basically talk about sex and sexuality and sexual health and pleasure and contraception all day long. And I'm here to wish you a happy World Contraception Day. talking about contraception today and uh, tell me how did you learn about contraception methods and where did you learn about them so back in India like uh, we had uh, this uh, biology class uh, so there uh, like the teacher started like uh, about the contraception method like how to prevent some things to happen and all of this stuff and did you find it was a lot of information or was the information rather limited I mean theoretically yes <laughs> but uh, yeah, through friends and uh, some few relatives and all of the stuff, then we came to know about uh, like what it is and all of the stuff. Yeah. And when you were learning, did you learn any myths that later you found out were actually wrong or lies, and and kind of that you rectified the information you learned? Ah, uh, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. You? Yeah. So, I, I mean, not exactly regarding the contraception, but uh, it's related to like. Uh, safe sexual practices and all of the stuff. So especially like, yeah, there are so many other myths that I've uh, heard about, but uh, eventually, like as I grew, uh, then I eventually I found out that those are not actually true, yeah. Perfect, and one final question. How do you think that we can better learn about contraception and family planning in general? Uh, I could say like, uh, if you include that thing in school syllabus or something like that, then that would be very, very helpful. And uh, even uh, if some big sports player or uh, any celebrity, if they promote about it, then also it is also a powerful tool. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe and sound. And when I fall, you tied a rope to me. You're blessing me every day. I was down with an illusion, like a sparrow with broken wings. But now I shine with your reflection on me. I'm getting back up on my feet. That you showed up was real. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Ingenuity Fund, Redefining Innovation and Equity in Family Planning and Contraception. It is great to see so many people joining in from around the world, and we are really excited to have this session. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a few administrative elements. First, this webinar will be recorded, and the recording will be available on the 120 Under 40 website. Second, we have simultaneous French interpretation provided for this webinar. If you would like French interpretation, please select the French language button at the bottom of your screen in the Zoom toolbar. Again, I would like to thank everyone for joining us. My name is Jordan Freeman, and I am a program officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Institute for Population and Reproductive Health. This webinar is presented by 120 Under 40, the new generation of family planning leaders, the Gates Institute, Bayer, and Pathfinder International in celebration of 2023 World Contraception Day. The mission of World Contraception Day is 
spread word and awareness around contraception and safe sex. World Contraception Day was launched in 2007 by Bayer and takes place on the 26th of September every year. It is an annual worldwide campaign to improve awareness of contraception and enable young people to make informed choices on their sexual and reproductive health. In this webinar, we will hear from our 120 under 40 2022 Ingenuity Fund winners about how they have applied innovative thinking and problem solving to address challenges around contraception, equity, and sexual and reproductive health. Launched on World Contraception Day in 2015, the 120 under 40, the new generation of family planning leaders, shines a light on the positive disruptions made by young leaders in family planning by recognizing and highlighting the achievements of the next generation of family planning leaders worldwide. In 2019, the 120 Under 40 Ingenuity Fund was launched to provide funding to 120 Under 40 winners for creative and innovative solutions to family planning and reproductive health. The 120 Under 40 Ingenuity Fund aims to galvanize winners to think big and bold around the challenges of sexual and reproductive health. Since then, the Ingenuity Fund has supported 20 groundbreaking projects across 14 different countries. Today, I am excited to present to you our 2022 Ingenuity Fund winners and their projects. The five projects you will hear about in this webinar all implement creative thinking and problem solving around the future of family planning to make positive disruptions in the field. Projects address new challenges related to contexts around the world in the areas of sexual education, arts and film, knowledge sharing, and barriers to access. To kick us off, and as you are logging on, I want us to all get thinking around what innovation means in sexual and reproductive health. So I'm going to ask you this question. I want you to have it in the back of your mind as we listen to the presentations for our, our Ingenuity Fund winners. Um, and then we'll have a live Q&A where we have some interaction and discussion around this. So the question is, how do we use innovation to address challenges related to equity and sexual reproductive health? And since this is World Contraception Day, I'm going to ask you to specifically think about this in relation to contraception and contraceptive access. Without further ado, I am now going to introduce our speakers. We have Felix from Tanzania, Nagla from Egypt, Saro from Pakistan, Nira from Indonesia, and Ashish from India. Welcome all, and we are delighted to have you here. I am now going to turn it over to Felix to tell us about his project, the Youth Animation Project. Hello everyone, my name is Felix Manyogote from Tanzania and I'm a 120 under 40 new generation of family planning leaders. Young people in Tanzania face many challenges in access of sexual reproductive health information and this is because sexual reproductive health information is considered as a taboo in many Tanzanian communities. Families do not talk with children and their adolescents regarding sexual reproductive health and contraceptive use. As in that, most adolescents end up with sexual transmitted infections, unwanted pregnancies, and unsafe abortions. In 2022, I received the Ingunity Fund to implement the Nyongoze Animation Project. Nyongoze Animation Project adopted the storytelling approach through the use of 3D animation video to raise awareness on sexual reproductive health information that are medically accurate easy to understand and empowering for young people aged 12 to 24 years of age in Tanzania. Niongoze is a Swahili word meaning take me to a right path and through storytelling animated format our videos challenges myths and taboos around sexual reproductive health and unpack issues that young people often do not discuss such as early sexual experiences and contraceptives. To date, our project has managed to display and, and disseminate the animated video to colleges and households in Mwanza, Tanzania. And we have managed to reach more than 2,000 young people. We are also looking forward to disseminate our animated videos on social media and local TV channels. Through our project, we have learned that the use of innovative animated video has been a unique, fun, and effective way to reach and attract young people's attention on discussing sexual reproductive health and the family planning issues. Kuongea na binti yangu juu ya mabadiliko ya Mungu. Upendo, njoo mwaya. 
Upendo umekuwa mkubwa sasa. Ngoja nikupe habari kuhusu mabadiliko yako ya mwili ili uweze kukabiliana nayo ipasavyo. Unavyozidi kuwa mdada, mwili wako unabadilika kama unavyoona. Sauti nyororo, chunusi, mwili wako umekuwa na umbo la duara na hata kuota maziwa. Na hivi karibuni utaanza kupata heavy. Usiwe na shaka, huu ndio ukubwa. Safari ya binti ni nzuri mno. Kuna mengi ya kujifunza. Tupo pamoja. Thank you, Felix. The animations that your team have developed are amazing. I'm looking forward to delving more into that development process and co-creation process in our discussion. Our next presentation comes from Sara with her project, The World's First HIV Transgender Superhero. Hello, everyone. I'm Sara Imran. I'm a transgender activist as well as 120 under 40 winner from Pakistan. And we always seen the as powers and uh, superheroes associated with major men and somehow with women too. But we have never seen a superhero or a superpower associated with a transgender person. So I was lucky that my idea of developing the world first transgender superhero character, helping out the issues related to SRHR by Ingenuity Fund. And uh, the idea is to develop a short video with a main hero character that is a transgender person and he or she is going to help the social cause that fall under the umbrella of SRHR. Um, while starting the project was, um, the idea in my mind was that to highlight and to bring about the power energies, positive energies associated with the transgender community because we have always seen the transgender person in a vulnerable position and is someone who is always asking for the help. So this time, I really want to change the narrative and as well as to emphasize again that uh, gender equality, when it comes to the gender equality, gender equity is very important and we have to include and mainstream the populations which are very much left behind. And uh, this topic is very close to my heart because I myself belong to the transgender community. I'm a transgender woman. And being a transgender woman living in a country uh, where the, you have a very weak legislation when there is a huge discrimination, harassment, bullying, threats, it, it makes you a lot of impact and trauma somehow in your life. And uh, it takes a lot of courage to stand up and to st speak for the justice and rights, especially to, for your gender identity and expression. I hope that this video will also help to counter the anti-gender narratives that is on the rise in the world. Even we are now seeing the anti-gender statements in the UN offices also. Um, this video will be launched in later this year. We are hoping to launch it on the International Day of Transgender Remembrance on 20th November, 2023, with collaborations with international stakeholders and organizations to, for the maximum outreach. And I'm, I will look forward for your positive feedback and even constructive feedback for the video and idea that, I, that actually helped me to make it more impactful and have a long-term growth on the transgender rights and justice. Thank you. Thank you, Saro. I think your work is an excellent demonstration of the importance of representation and equity. I know we have a little surprise for the audience coming up regarding your innovation, so definitely stay tuned for that, everyone. Just a little bit of a teaser. The next project we will hear about is from Nagla with her project, Gamification for CSC, so that's SRH Education. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nagla Fathi. I am from Egypt, and I am in Luenti Fund uh, uh, Award winner uh, 2022. And I would like to present uh, a little bit about our project uh, that we are going to implement in Egypt, and we hope to spread it uh, to the region and all over the world. Uh, let me first start my presentation with some uh, statistic information about the needs that we found uh, in Egypt. The percentage of uh, uh, unwanted uh, newborn babies on 2021 was 20.5%. Uh, uh, that's the last uh, uh, screening uh, in Egypt made by Ministry of uh, Health. Uh, the, the previous one was on 2014 and it was 15.7%. The next thing, total demand for family planning uh, on 2021 is uh, uh, 80.82 uh, uh, percentage. Uh, the previous one was 2014, 71.1. Uh, also, the unmet need for family planning uh, became 13.8 uh, uh, and it was 20.6. Now we can see that it is increasing. 
so the mortality rate of uh, newborn also increasing and the, uh, the anemia among the children under five because of all these re reasons, it's also increasing. And that's because that's the mothers uh, of the un unmet need uh, of family planning and unwanted pregnancies, they didn't have the time to recover from the previous pregnancies. They didn't have the time to be um, healthy again. And that's, we found that it's because of lack of awareness. They don't know that they need spacing. They don't know how to use family planning. They don't know uh, what is the methods available. And that's need more uh, intervention. So we uh, invented a tool, it calls games as innovative uh, tool for comprehensive sexual education, in particular reproductive health, gender-based violence and family planning, because we found out that people don't go to uh, the health unit to take awareness, they don't want to attend lectures, they don't want even to attend uh, the funded session uh, provided by uh, organizations, uh, uh, international organizations, they need uh, something different, they need something innovative. And uh, we tried uh, this initiative as we are going to explain now. So uh, we discovered what is in their mind. We did a survey, we did a baseline uh, study, and we went to the villages and the marginalized area and asked them for what they need and what is different. And we tried a pilot of our project for three years uh, before we uh, apply for this uh, phase four, and it was Games for Goals. Uh, this is uh, some of our activities with men, uh, refugees, and uh, Egyptians. Uh, 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 target group was uh, children and uh, and old women and uh, and old men also to an age of 50 years old, uh, from uh, uh, 12 years old to 50 years old, post gender. And we found out they, they like to play. They like to know the information inside the game. They are more interactive and more uh, cooperative to learn about family planning, to learn about sexual and reproductive health. And even women were, had the ability to express themselves and express their need more when they play games rather than going to a lecture or peer-to-peer -peer consultation. So we invent games, our project about inventing uh, games. So uh, we took a few steps towards uh, our project. Uh, we started uh, last uh, January um, by recruiting our team. We organized a, a gamification camp. Uh, that gamification camp, we uh, implemented uh, a gamification um, TOT and the sexual and reproductive health TOT, like training of trainers for 31 for 31 uh, youth uh, from uh, 12 governed rates all over Egypt. And they are coming from villages and marginalized area. We specifically um, encouraged youth who are living and they are youth leaders uh, or youth uh, activists uh, inside these areas to come and join us. We found we, so we founded them with the, um, accommodation and everything to be able to learn about SRH, learn about GBV and gender-based violence, family planning, and all the topics. And then we, we uh, supported them with training, specific training about gamification. Uh, and at the end of this camp, we, we were able to uh, invent more than 20 games to, uh, to about uh, SRH, about uh, uh, climate change and effect on SRH, about family planning. And we have made a competition and selected the games that will be inside the toolkit. This is some pictures of games and activities that we have uh, implemented as this run. This was one of the initial uh, study that we made uh, to study our tools before we apply for the project even as a pilot here. Board games that is uh, three meters.
meter burst limiters that we can use uh, to uh, uh, send messages about the SRH and the, the other rules that have been so we are we are going to deliver with our H rights. And it is, was kind of impossible to uh, gather children uh, who are girls and males uh, and boys uh, in the same event. So bringing them together was a challenge and and after this they, they said that it was first time to play with boys and that was an achievement also. Thank you, Nagla. I'm excited to hear more about the implementation and scalability of your project as well. I want to take a quick pause to remind everyone to please drop your questions into the Q&A box as we hear about these projects so we can get to them in the live session. Our next presentation comes from Nira with her project Protection is Sexy. Hi everyone, it's great to be here today. My name is Nira. I'm from Indonesia and I'm one of the Ingenuity Fund Award winners in 2022. And it's my absolute pleasure uh, to be able to share with you some key updates of our project. It's called Protexi Ito Sexy or Prote Protection is Sexy in English. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, the organization and community that I am representing. So I'm the co-founder of Tabu ID. We are one of Indonesia's largest social media based SRHR interventions for young people. We have across 140, we have 140,000 followers across all our social media platforms, and we are a 100% youth led nonprofit organization based in Indonesia. So to start off um, this presentation, I'd like to give a little bit of background of why we started it in the first place. So. A really worrying statistic that my team and I uh, came across when we were you know, designing projects for Taboo ID was the fact that 70% of unmarried and sexually active young people did not wear a condom during their first sexual intercourse. And this can you know, be um, understood in light of the lack of culturally relevant, high quality, youth friendly and engaging information on contraception for young people in Indonesia. And when we're you know, analyzing the current information and education that we have around contraception, the following words, you know, really come to mind. It's, you know, a lot of it is too clinical, they're hard to understand, they're boring, they're very limited, um, there's a lot of stigma and shame surrounding it, um, it's often dry, abstinence focused, a lot of jargons, um, and really focusing on, you know, the risks and the negative aspects of, of contraception. And so with our protect Protection is Sexy or Protexi Ito Sexy program, we aim to create an accessible and inclusive digital campaign on contraception that is co-created by both young people and also digital artists. So this campaign aims to disrupt the status quo and also turn the tide on the negative messaging regarding contraception um, that young people in Indonesia face um, on a regular basis. And at the same time, we'd like to make sure as well that the content and the media that we produce has accessibility features. And so um, it's inclusive, particularly for young people with uh, disabilities as well. And as I shared before, a key feature of this campaign is actually the fact that it's co-produced and co-created by young people and um, digital artists. And so what we did with the campaign was through an open recruitment process, we matched 10 young people with 10 digital artists. Um, and these, these pairings, basically we call them pairs, and their task is to co-create content around contraception, particularly condoms, um, that utilizes edutainment principles, that utilizes storytelling, and basically content uh, around condoms that reflect the realities and the needs of young people in Indonesia. And the reason why we really wanted to be able to um, you know, facilitate this partnership was the fact that and we felt that matching young people who obviously have the expertise on how young people you know, are facing these issues on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as harnessing the, the creative uh, skills of, of artists will, you know, will produce content that is both accessible, easy to understand, but also entertaining, that young people can find um, engaging as well. And so after we uh, managed to recruit the 10 pairs, uh, we also trained the pairs in a lot of different skills, inclu including SRHR, so that they have a, you know, a strong base of um, SRHR knowledge, including what are the you know, values of, of comprehensive sexuality education. We also trained them in social and behavioral change communication, so that they also have a good understanding of what it takes to create compelling and um, persuasive messages. And also, lastly, as I said, uh, a key component of this campaign is the inclusive uh, inclusivity and accessibility. So we also trained the pairs um, in inclusive uh, and accessible communications. 
And aside from that, we also did consultations with um, youth with disabilities communities. And so we did specific outreach to YWD communities um, in our networks and basically to ensure that the content and the, yeah, the content plan that we have is in accordance with their needs and as well as you know, making sure that we're really integrating all the accessibility features that are required to make th that content as accessible as possible. And we really wanted to capture the voices of, you know, YWDs and making sure that they're part of the co-creation, part of the co-designing of this campaign. We also worked um, really in close collaboration with all of the pairs in order to ensure the technical quality and accuracy of the content. And we did, we did this through regular uh, check-in calls. So we really tried to um, mentor and also build the capacity of, of these pairs. And the reason why we really tried to invest in this capacity building is that we believe that we're able to build you know, future SRHR champions and that they can then become advocates of SRHR even after this, this project ends. And so we really tried to invest a lot in capacity strengthening and, and mentoring and yeah, providing very um, specific and constructive feedback for each of their uh, digital media. And so after a couple of months of this you know, co-creation, co-designing process, um, I'm very happy to share that we were able to produce a total of 33 digital media from the 10 uh, pairs that we were working with. And the range of digital media produced is also very diverse, um, particularly for taboo standards, because we usually just work with infographics and short form video like TikTok or, or Instagram Reels. But um, thanks to the collaboration that we facilitated between the young people and the digital artists, we, will able, we were able to create um, content such as you know, digital comics, motion comics, digital collages, podcasts, and even video poetry and visual poetry. Here are snippets of some of the, the content that we have um, produced. And this is also a teaser that we actually uh, posted on the Tab YD uh, Instagram page to kind of showcase um, and build engagement around the campaign. Yeah, so we're very proud um, to see the range of uh, and diversity of the media produced that we wouldn't have been able to to do or to you know to showcase if not for the collaboration and the partnerships between um, the pairs. So I think you could, you're also able to see in the video that we included accessibility features um, in all the media that's produced, and this includes subtitles, alt text, audio transcripts, and also sign language interpreters. And you were able to see them kind of at the bottom right corner of of some of the videos. I can also show that we have some accessibility features integrated in our website as well. Here you can see that bottom left, we have that accessibility feature. And then here are the, some of the accessibility features menu that people can, can kind of toggle with and explore. In addition to that, we also conducted regular live events. Um, so for example, Instagram lives with each of the, of the pairings um, and also a couple of webinars to maintain engagement and to you know, further promote, uh, promote the campaign. And while we're you know, obviously very happy with all of the accomplishments that we've been able to make these past couple of months, they didn't come without challenges. And some of the challenges included difficult, difficulties, difficulties in recruiting some of the digital artists, especially the ones, um, the non-visual digital artists. So we had, you know, we had to extend the open recruitment process a couple of weeks um, because we weren't able to reach out to um, um, our goal target basically, but then uh, we were able to overcome this challenge by doing specific outreach through um, social media to the digital artists that we wanted to work with. And so this, we were able to then um, recruit the 10 digital artists that we are now working with. We also had some you know, negative public reactions, a bit of backlash towards the, the campaign. And I think it was because of how uh, the narrative that we were pushing around the campaign and maybe we were too focused on the unmarried young people part. And so after we switched um, some of the language that we were using, um, we, we managed to kind of avoid further negative public reactions and backlash. 
we also had some language and communication barriers between the pairs because you know for all of the pairs it was the first time that they met each other it was the first time that they were working together so um, it was you know it was uh, sometimes difficult to make sure that there was you know constant and um, constructive communication but we also assigned uh, a specific focal point for each of the pairs and so the focal points from the taboo team really helped bridge that communication gap and make sure that everything you know is running smoothly the fact that we also had a range and a diverse uh, you know diverse range of digital media produced also caused some technical and hardware difficulties because obviously at, at Tabuidu we weren't you know that experienced yet that experience yet with some of the digital media that was produced and so there were some uh, barriers in kind of integrating them within the digital infrastructure that we had but yeah through tri trial and error we managed to overcome this as well so what's next? Uh, we're very excited to take this campaign to the next uh, step. Uh, we're going to be starting. We're going to start moving some of the content to our website. We're also going to be continuing the campaign until uh, World Contraception Day, where we plan to have a closing uh, webinar. And then, um, lastly, but also. Um, you know, very importantly, we are also planning to conduct assessments to measure the outcomes of the project and also to capture the lessons um, learned. And we believe that this is really, really important to be able to, um, you know, to learn from our uh, from from the progress that we've made and to also capture the feedback and inputs of the young people and the digital artists that we worked with. So yeah, that is just a bit of um, a bit of updates from the Protaxi Itu Sexy or Protection is Sexy campaign from Tabu ID. And obviously, I want to end with a big, big thank you as well to my team. Uh, everything is, you know, all, all of the different accomplishments that I've shared. They're all thanks to the team's hard work. So let me zoom in a little bit to their, um, you know, beautiful pictures. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to to do anything basically. So really, really thank you so much to the Tabu ID team for making everything happen. And obviously thank you as well um, to the Ingenuity Fund for making all of this possible. And we're very, very excited. Uh, we're very proud of the work that we've been able to do. And hopefully we are going to be able to scale it up and reach more young people with youth friendly and accessible information and content around contraception. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Nira. The content you and your team have created is beautifully done. I'm looking forward to diving into some of those lesson learns around your innovation. Our final presentation comes from Ashish with his project Promoting Self-Care Approach for Sexual Reproductive Health to Differently Abled Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow participants, I am truly honored to be here today to present on a topic of utmost importance, promoting sexual reproductive health among differently abled person through self-care approach. My name is Dr. Ashish Kumar Srivastava and I serves as a senior advisor programs and I am winner of Thought Leadership Award and winner of FP20 under 40. I am also proud to mention that our initiative has been recognized and awarded as a winner of Ingenuity Fund 2020. Let's embark on this journey together to explore how we can empower differently able individuals in India to access and make informed choice about their sexual and reproductive health. To set the stage, let's begin with the understanding that 17 million people are deaf or hard of hearing people in India, and it is close to 19% of disabled population. And out of these per, uh, per disabled population, 50% of them are in active reproductive age group. The demographic form of significant part of our society and it's our responsibility to ensure their access to essential health service challenges. Now let's delve into key challenges faced by differently abled individuals when it comes to accessing family planning and sexual reproductive health services. We need to acknowledge these challenges to address them effectively. People with disability face socioeconomic disadvantages and often they have a limited access to sexual reproductive health information, including family planning services. People with disability have the same rights as the people without disability to prevent unintended pregnancy, but very little is known about their experiences and challenges in accessing sexual reproductive health services. Key factor affecting accessing to and uptake of family planning for women and girls with disabilities are classified into four domains, individual, environmental, attitudinal, and institutional. First, if we talk about first domain, individual, it's intersecting and compounding form of discrimination, disadvantage, which varies depending on the type of severity of impairment. And these barriers are further enhanced by a difference in language, caste, migration, and refugee status, and family status. 
physical barrier to access health facilities, queues at the health facilities, and accessibility of health planning message is uh, in the environmental domain that challenges a disabled population. Perception that a person with disability are asexual, stigma, negative attitude, and discrimination from health worker, overprotective attitude, and lack of communication by parents and caregivers are some of the major challenges in attitudes. Institutionally, need for national policy to protect SRHR for disabled people, lack of age gender impairment, impairment dis disaggregated data on access and uptake of family learning is missing. Lack of technical expert expertise in family planning from a disability perspective is also need a, need a new review. Talking about SRH is still a taboo and not really talked about in the community or by the service provider in India. The hearing disabled often face challenges to convey their need and have little or no knowledge on the subject. The quality and adequacy of information on SRH received are also questionable. Being disabled, their need for SRH is often ignored. So, with a goal to uh, provide family planning for all, especially who are disabled or dis disadvantageous. Our objective are clear to generate awareness among hearing disabled on SRH uh, needs, provide information on safe and healthy SRH practices, promote informed choice on family planning services, establish mechanisms to resolve queries and FAQs, increase access for by providing line listing of health facilities in catchment areas. To tackle this challenge and to uh, complete this objective heads on, we have a developed an innovative solution. We have created a digital application prototype that compiles interactive videos recording sessions on different topics of sexual reproductive health. What makes this solution is unique that we have used high definition video recording with sign languages and bilingual site, uh, subtitles. This video are recorded by subject expert with a special focus on facial expression, lip movement and hand movement to ensure clarity and accessibility. Our focus area of this uh, uh, application called Badhir Metra is on family planning overview, best method of family planning in diverse situation, informed choice in family planning, frequently asked question and facility listing of family planning services. Why is our innovation remarkable and it's unique that it's innovation of its first kind to address SRH need of hearing disabled, promote self-care as per the prescribed best practices, efficient use of technology to address unmet sexual and reproductive health need, and it's evidence-based content derived from the national and international guidelines on family planning and SRH and best practices. We have strategically chosen the national capital of India and Delhi and CR as our setting, our pilot sites are two vocational training institute for deaf people. This choice was made due to good penetration of a smartphone and optimal internet connectivity in this area. Project phase. Our project has gone through several phases like planning phase, development phase, execution phase, and evaluation phase. What sets our prototype apart is it allows the access of quality family planning and SRH content, which is very to navigate as per need. Badhir Mitra is one stop solution to provide end to end support in making the informed choice on family planning. High definition videos with sign languages and bilingual subtitles are easy to understand and follow. Each topic on SRH and family planning is thoroughly covered and very nicely explained by the subject expert. The application provides facility to get complete list of nearby health facilities, which offer family learning and SRA services in the catchment area. We have learned valuable lessons throughout this journey. Beneficiaries are dispersed widely. They are not in only in the institution. They are outside and most of them are, uh, are not getting any information on SRH. So we need to identify platform for integration and focus on the health issue more comprehensively, including family planning and uh, sexual reproductive rights. As we move forward, our plan includes landscaping organizations instead interested in this initiative and presenting their idea for pulling up funds for a scale up 
and advocating with Ministry of Social Justice to identify the platform for wider dissemination and digital application integration. Thank you for your attention. I am open to any question or comment you may have. Together, we can make a significant difference in promoting sexual reproductive health among differently abled persons. Wonderful. Thank you, Ashish, for that presentation. And again, we are seeing the power of prioritizing equity and access to sexual, sexual and reproductive health, especially with resources such as contraceptives. I would like to thank all of our panelists for the, their amazing presentations. And I'd like to invite our panelists to join me on camera for some questions. Um, I really enjoyed hearing about all of your projects, and I am excited as we jump into the Q&A. Just a reminder to the audience, if you would like to ask any questions, please put them in the Q&A feature of Zoom. If you have any questions for Nira's project specifically, please do post them in the Q&A. Unfortunately, she has had an emergency and can't be with us today, but we'll be sure that she gets all of the feedback and questions. And so as my panelists are joining me on camera, I'd like us to kick us off by going back to the question that I posed at the beginning of our webinar. And it is, how do we use innovation to address challenges related to equity and SRHR? And since it's World Contraception Day, I'm going to ask you to specifically think about um, contraceptives. So I'd like to pose that question to my panelists right now, but I also invite the audience to put some of your thoughts and comments in the chat as well. And since I think Nagla is the first person I see on my screen, I am going to tag you first. So how do you how do we use innovation to address the challenges in SRHR, especially as related to contraceptives? Uh, hello, Jordan. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, for us, we we actually uh, found out that uh, as we said in the presentations, that people uh, ha this this is a sense to topic, so people don't want to uh, talk about it. Uh, especially in um, uh, regions and countries that has uh, religious uh, boundaries or custom boundaries about uh, sexual and reproductive health or even uh, misconception about uh, family planning and the contraception. Because people uh, in my area, at least, they think that family planning will um, cause uh, some um, in fertilization or uh, prevent them from uh, from bringing babies and the spacing is wrong and uh, taking family planning methods from the first year of marriage is uh, something wrong and there is a lot of misconceptions and uh, misunderstanding uh, because uh, lack of awareness and lack of information so uh, we have the right to get an information and that's um, one of the sexual and reproductive health rights so uh, we thought out of the box how we can talk about a sensitive topic without touching um, uh, the customs and uh, uh, religious boundaries or uh, making people like scared from us because we, we are talking about sexual and reproductive health and this word in specific, specifically is very sensitive in our community. So that's why we started uh, at 2000. <clears throat> to uh, develop new uh, tools like uh, we use the, the regular games like snake, snake and ladder and ludo to uh, uh, insert some information and that uh, year by year developed to uh, start from uh, like gamifying regular games to develop uh, new games new tools uh, new sessions uh, and informations and how we are delivering the sessions we don't deliver our awareness sessions even if we are not using certain games like board games, we don't deliver it like a regular session or just peer-to-peer -peer talk. We use interactive and physical activities and um, designed awareness message uh, symbol to uh, both uh, children ages from 12 to uh, 17 years old. And also it can be introduced for adults who have lack of awareness about family planning and contraception. So we started um, developing uh, new games uh, by 2019. We pilot in different areas and we found that there is attraction and more attention and less sensitivity to these tools. So people like to play, they, uh, they like to um, uh, like use a football game to learn about contraception. They like to go for a game night. Uh, women uh, find it it's less sensitive. They will find uh, information inside the game, not someone 
talking to her directly. Uh, we train facilitators to raise more awareness through the game, like not only the game itself, but they give also uh, information and uh, uh, some messages during the game. Like it's un like uh, unawarely they are educated about the information and they feel comfortable to express their uh, uh, issues, questions, and the challenges. We found people also talking about um, domestic violence and sexual abuse uh, through the games, and they are expressing things that we never thought we can hear about in such communities. We go to villages, and villages in Egypt are is a most restricted area and it has a lot of customs and issues, uh, sorry, and cultures boundaries. So that was wonderful to find that even children can talk. They, they talk to their peers. Uh, we monitored and uh, evaluated our um, tours for three years. And we found that uh, games uh, keep, uh, keep learning them and teaching them about the right, their uh, is a contraception. They go now to the health units and wish they can play in the health clubs uh, such games. And we are developing this uh, toolkit to be available for uh, in youth centers to help them, um, like have a source of information in the info corner or something, uh, to uh, play and play with their peers, play with their parents. Uh, to know more about uh, their rights and to have an informed information and informed decision uh, about family planning methods and uh, how they can uh, choose their own methods, um, either they are um, young, uh, young married or uh, recently married uh, people or going to uh, have uh, 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 any, any new relationships or uh, going to be in, sexually involved with in a relationship, uh, we aware them about their rights and yeah that we are using gamification as an innovation innovative tool of course, and uh, in ordinary awareness. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
an opportunity to the beneficiaries on what kind of innovation they would be much interested and we just modifying just trying to make it very fun and engaging and that's why we adopted the, 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 the power of storytelling. I hope you can understand, you can agree with me on how powerful stories are. So having someone who could narrate some stories to the young generation was something very, very attractive and something that would create and buy more attention to the young people. So that's how we came up with our, with our innovation. That's how we came up with the animated videos. Perfect, thank you. And a thread I'm hearing between you and Adla is it's making the entry point accessible and not making it difficult to access that type of information. So thank you for sure. that. Saro, I'm gonna throw the same question to you. How do we use innovation to address equity and SRHR, especially as it relates to contraceptives and the celebration of World Contraception Day? Hello everyone, I'm Audible. Yes. yes. Okay. So I believe that for me, um, like the idea behind the like the world first animated transcendental superhero for SSR is because we are always seeing their binary perspectives. And when it comes to the uh, new era and especially the young generation, like they want innovation and innovation, like the one thing that I have done is like to interact with the grassroots level community who are who are left out and what they think, what their their perception. And uh, one thing is very important when you want to make sure that you are innovative to include everyone, everyone voices, especially to for whom you are producing something, the stakeholders directly and indirectly. And I believe that uh, um, this is something that can, and always innovation is something that is going to challenge the norms. And it is sometimes like, I mean, not most of the times, it, it is adventure and uh, you need uh, a lot of courage to challenge the norms. And um, so I believe that it has risk and higher the risk is higher the return. So normally, like I've seen a lot of people that are afraid from challenging new things, experiencing new ideas because of a lot of pressure from the sometimes even pressure coming from the peers that this is not going to work out and this is going to work out. But I believe that you need to be confident regarding the idea and always starting with the small thing. And this idea is something I, I'm thinking that this is a pilot phase and I believe it is that this will be a platform or a sustainable way, a character or a design to help out that things related to SIHR and the non-binary people or LGBTIQ community. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank uh, you. I think that's really powerful. So thank you for that. Sheesh. I'm going to ask you the same question. Innovation and advancing equity and SRHR, especially related to contraceptives. What is your view? I think you are you are muted. <laughs> Are you able to unmute yourself? Unmute. Yeah. There you go. Yes. No, I can, can, can you? Yeah. So the important point is equity. It's it's already an advanced form. Like if we see as a, I'm a public health professional and if I see the accessibility is the first point that important point so equity is equi thinking of equity is is an innovation the important point is how to reach the goal of family planning for all so i thought that everybody is thinking about including the third gender everybody is in, uh, thinking about including uh, including the marginalized what about they are social uh, family planning they included in the family planning for to to envi envisage the dream of having family planning for all. That's why I thought that that's where the 
inclusion of people who are having disability in existing family. So issued a guideline on self-care of family plan on active health rights. So how since there are socio-cultural barriers regarding family planning, there are barriers with the disabled population. So how we can utilize the innovative part or innovations using the self-care approach for those who are having uh, the barrier of family planning. So that's where my innovation and thoughts come in my, my mind that if, how can I leverage digital technology, self-care approach, and for those who need it the most and not getting them, uh, not getting it, because of discriminatory behavior, behavior, because of judgment, there are in India there are all the facilities are overloaded. So nobody is going to uh, uh, tell them that uh, th nobody has time. So how we can provide them this uh, uh, services? So this is uh, uh, this is how uh, I thought that how can I uh, how can I leverage the digital technology part, self-care part for those uh, who are disabled, who are, who are not able to hear. And that's where my innovation comes. And uh, I thought that if I can, have, I can make a video so that they can understand or I, if the video can facilitate them in choosing the family planning at their home, in their own comfortable space, that's how we can uh, we can address the equity part of family planning. That's from my side. Wonderful, thank you. I appreciate all of your answers, and I hope that has gotten our audience thinking around what innovation looks like um, and how we use it for equity. So I know there are two questions in the Q and A. I think they're both directed to Nadla. Um, so from Rhonda. So the first question is the games look great. Testing will any of the tools be shared? And the second question is, do your games cover natural family planning methods um, that are based on observing conventional cycle designs like the two-day method? I want to answer those questions now. Thank you, Jordan, and uh, uh, you, Rhonda, for your question. Uh, first question, uh, if, uh, thing, yes, we have we are going to develop a toolkit. It will be basically in Arabic, but we are going to find a, a scale up fund to uh, provide it in English and it will be published through a website. And we will uh, be providing also a facilitation training uh, um, on a volunteering basis uh, for uh, those from uh, SRH background and youth ad activists who would like to use these uh, games and toolkit to implement uh, the games and uh, the manual uh, in their projects or in the area to address an SRH. Um, the toolkit has an awareness part and also the games and each game talk about a specific part in the SRH and family planning. Some games talk specifically about family planning methods, others uh, talk about uh, sexual and reproductive health um, in general and we use uh, its all one uh, curriculum uh, manual as a, uh, of course in Arabic as a um, uh, reference uh, for our uh, educational uh, messages and it involves the human rights, sexual and reproductive health rights, administration, uh, family planning, different family planning methods and how we can get informed uh, decision, uh, uh, advocacy, uh, happy family, everything about sexual and reproductive health we uh, put in different games because it, uh, they are uh, 10 games, three board games, three card games, and um, um, from four to six physical uh, and uh, sports uh, for development games. So we have different games talking about different topics, touching different areas. Yes, it will be involved, it will involve uh, more about illustration. Uh, uh, and other uh, sensitive topics that we uh, we want to address, uh, and it will be available soon uh, in a launching event, and we will share with, of course, with one hundred twenty under under fourteen John Hopkins to share among others uh, and spread it, uh, all over the world, so as people can use it and get benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you. So I know we're just about at time. Um, I wanted to quickly show Saro's graphic. 
that she's created for her superhero and we're featured we'll have it up on the um 120 under 40 website as well so Molly, are you able to show us that and it looks so beautiful so sarah do you want to quickly touch on what we're seeing and what we can expect coming up yeah so basically um this is a character with showing the purple thing as a power and uh, of course this will be like something that uh, uh, the, the person who has gone through a lot of pain and that converted that pain into power and that power converted into a superpower to help the other people and of course like it is going to address different narratives of the srhr that includes specifically sex workers rights um, the gender-based violence, freedom of choice, contraception. And so there's a lot a lot of mergers and overlapping of the things and intersectionality. Wonderful, thank you. And we are excited to seeing more and seeing the um, short animated film as well. But thank you, everyone. We are at the end of our webinar. So I'd like to thank you once again for attending as well as thanking our Ingenuity Fund winners for sharing all of their work um, and their thoughts around innovation. We invite you to check out the Ingenuity Fund blog that will be being posted on the 120 Under 40 website, as well as the recording of this session. We invite you to share it. Um, so I thank everyone for being here and to continue our World Contraception Day celebrations, we invite you to join us at 9 a.m. Eastern, so in about 30 minutes, for a roundtable discussion with the AYSRHR Global Roadmap for Action, UNFPA and FP2030, as well as a live discussion that will follow that. So thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your days, and we hope to see you very, very soon.